want to see change in your community? Who want to see change in the community? My brother, you want to see change? Sister, y'all want to see change in the community? Y'all want a better life, right? Let's see what God says. Sisters, sisters, hold on. What did we do against God for us to get brought into slavery? Who knows the answer? Huh? We did what? What did we do? We broke the commandments, right? Now let's see. If they sin against thee, when you sin, that means you're breaking the commandments. Read. For there is no man that did it not. And thou be angry with them. And God was what? And thou be angry with them. And God was angry with us. The head of sister. The head of the woman is who? But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Who's the head of every man? Who's the head of every man? Who's the head of every man? Okay, let's see. And the head of the woman oh. is the man. Problem is right. Who understand what the problem is? You understand, brother? You understand what the problem is, right? Give me First Kings eight. So now we understand who we are as a nation, right? We're not black. We're not Hispanic. We are the Israelites. We are God's chosen people. Yeah, let yeah yeah. Listen good. Listen good. So now First Kings eight. You know what I want, right? Forty. Now look, I'm gonna show you what God says. You have to do. Who want to see change in your community? Who want to see change in the community? My brother, you want to see change? Sister, y'all want to see change in the community? Y'all want a better life, right? Let's see what God says. Because the Christian church is not giving a solution. The brother just told, well, we're going to show you the solutions now. Read that. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 8, verse 40. Bring it down. Verse 46. Read. If they sin against thee. So guess what? What was the problem? What did we do against God? Sisters, sisters, hold on. What did we do against God for us to get brought into slavery? Who knows the answer? Huh? We did what? What did we do? We broke the commandments, right? Now let's see. Hold on. Now let's see what God says we got to do. If they sin against thee. When you sin, that means you're breaking the commandments. Read. For there is no man that sinneth not. Uh-huh. And thou be angry with them. And God was what? And thou be angry with them. And God was angry with us. Read. And deliver them to the enemy. And what did God do? And deliver them to the enemy. Who's the enemy? All nations are the enemy. Because guess what? Before the white man put us in slavery, the Arabs had us in slavery. Before the Arabs, the East Indians had us in slavery. You understand? The Chinese had us in slavery. But they're not going to teach you that in school. Why would they teach you that? Exactly. Now read. And deliver them to the enemy uh -huh. so that they uh, so that they carry them away captive. That they what? Carry them away captive. How was we carried away captive? By chains and ships on slave cargo ships. Read. Unto the land of the enemy, uh -huh. far or near. We were sent all over. Read. Yet, if they be sick themselves. Hold on, brother. Hold on, sisters. What's the solution if we what? Yet, if they bethink themselves. If we bethink ourselves. Right. What does that mean? Okay, what do you say? What does it mean? God says, but I did all these things to them. They got me angry. But if they shall bethink themselves. What does it mean to bethink yourself? What you think, brother? Who got an idea? What you think? So to what? To be humble, to repent. Everything I said was right. We got to return back to who we really are. Because in slavery, 
They told you you were Spanish. They told you you was black. They told you you was a native Indian. No. God says you're the 12 tribes of Israel. And with your nationality, and with your nationality, with your bloodline, there comes what? Culture, heritage, what? A standard, a way that you must live. You understand? You understand, Reed? Yet, if they rethink themselves uh-huh. in the land whether they were carried captive uh-huh. and repent. And do what? And repent. And do what? And repent. And do what? Repent. We have to repent. So now, that's the solution. What is God going to do after he, after we repent? What? And make supplications unto thee. And pray to God, asking for forgiveness. I didn't know I shouldn't smoke. I didn't know I shouldn't commit fornication. I didn't know I was breaking the Sabbath. God, forgive me. Then what will God do? In the land of them that carried them captive. Because guess what? We're in that land of the people that brought us captive. Read. Saying, we have sinned Uh and have done perversely. Uh We have committed wickedness. What does God want us to do? He wants us to acknowledge our faults. He wants us to acknowledge, God, I'm wrong. I did not know. I didn't know I was an Israelite. I didn't, we didn't know we got to keep your laws. We're sorry. And then what is he going to do? And so, return unto thee with all their heart. We got to return to God with all our heart. Read. And with all their soul. Uh-huh. And their land of their en- in the land of their enemies. Read. Which led them away captive. Read. And pray unto thee towards their land. What does God want us to do? Pray to him towards our land. What is our land that we come from? Give me that Galatians. Hold that. Give me that Galatians. What land is our land? God says, pray to me toward the land that I gave your fathers. He wants us to remember the heritage that we once had. We're getting comfortable in America. He wants us to face our land. But what is our land? Say it again. All right. Read that. The book of Galatians, chapter 4, verse 26. But Jerusalem. But what? But Jerusalem. But what? But Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Read. Which is above is free. Which is above is free. Read. Which is the mother of us all. Which is the mother of us all. Because what you don't know is the land of Jerusalem, that was the Garden of Eden. That is our land. That's our land. And guess what, sister? That's what? That is Northeast Africa. That is a part of Africa. You understand? Now go back to that. Now what is God going to do? Read. And so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies which led them away captive and pray unto thee towards their land. Verse 50. And forgive thy people. Hold on, hold on. Y'all hear that? What is God going to do? And forgive thy people. Then, then, God will forgive us. Read. That have sinned against thee. Because we were in sin against him. But when we return back to him, he's going to say, all right, my people ready for me. All right, we can work now. So now, let's see something. Go to Revelations 13 and 9. How is God going to fix everything once we get in order with him? Let's say we all stop sinning. When we stop sinning, what is the game plan that God has written in this book? How is he going to set everything back in order? What you say? What you say? Okay, okay. What do you say, sis? What does God have to do? He going to do what? He's going to return everything that was ours. But why did he have to take it away from us? Because we didn't know how to act. We had riches. We had power. But we were we didn't know how to act. So now what we must do, I'm going to read to you what he's going to do, and I'm going to give you all the solutions to how to fix it. Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 9. Who wants the solutions? We need people who want solutions. Everybody knows the problem, but nobody wants the solution. That's the problem. Read. If any man have an ear, let him hear. How many of y'all got ears? We all got ears, right? Let him hear. Read. He that leadeth into captivity. God says, God says, he that lead us into captivity. Go ahead, go ahead, let's go. 
So stay right there, sister. Then our people go into slavery. Then we go into slavery. What did God say? He that leadeth into captivity. God says, those people that led you into captivity, what did he say? Shall go into captivity. What did the Bible say? Shall go into captivity. Those that led us into captivity, it is written in the Bible that they must go into captivity. That's the God that we serve. We. He that killed it with the sword. How many of your forefathers were killed by the sword? During the time of the conquistadors. During the time of the British, the British, the English. We must be killed with the sword. What are we reading? We're reading the Holy Bible. The same Bible that's in every church. The same Bible that we were killed for reading in slavery. Read. Here is the patient. Here is what? Now listen good. Here is what? Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Patience and faith. Patiently waiting as we repent and keep God's commandments. And faithful, faithfully waiting on Christ's return. This is the patience and faith of the saints of this Bible. You understand? Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. So now, let me show you, who wants to keep God's laws? Who's ready to keep God's laws? Are you ready? Are you ready? Because guess what? If you don't want to keep God's laws, that means you're happy being a slave. That's what that means. Go to, go to Judah 5 and 20. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you that all nations know as long as the nation of Israel is in sin, they're going to win. They're going to win. When we start keeping God's laws, we're connected with God and he's going to fight for us. I'm going to show you that. Read that. Judah 5 and 10. Come on, brother. Judah 5 and 10. And guess what? That's the reason why they call you black and Hispanic. Because once they disconnect you from who you are, you're not going to remember the uh, responsibility you have. I know. We, we did not know. That was, their, that was them trying to keep us away from our power, which is God. Obedience to God is our power. Read. Judah 5 and 20. The book of Judah, chapter 5, verse 20. Read. Now, therefore, my Lord and governor. Who is speaking? These are people of two different nations speaking about us. During the time of the Babylonian Empire, they had this conversation about us. Read. If there be any error in this people. If there be any wickedness in the Israelites. Read. And they sin against their God. And they sin against their God. What is that showing you? The other nations know that the God of heaven and earth don't got nothing to do with them. He made them, but he made them for a reason, for us. They were made to serve us. We are made to serve God. When we go against God, he put us under the people that are supposed to serve us. Read. Let us consider that this shall be their ruin. Are we ruined today? Did you hear the curses today? They know that. That's why they promote music for our women to become whorish. They promote music for our men to be gangbangers and drug dealers. That's what they want. Because when we break the commandments, that will be our ruin. Read. And let us go up and we shall overcome them. And let the nations do what? And we shall overcome them. And they know they will overcome us. So how important it is for us to keep the commandments. It's life and death. Now, go to what? Go to Hebrews 13 and 4. One of the biggest problems in our community is the household. Because where, where, where do kids learn everything from? Who is the first teachers of, 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 exactly. So, who are the ones on the loose? The children, right? So we gotta fix the household. Let's get to it, read that. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse four. Oh. Marriage is honorable in all. Marriage is honorable in all. You understand that? Marriage is honorable in all. Explain to me the first marriage that was ever created. Who remembers? Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve is the beginning of the, of the uh, household. Man and woman, husband and wife. 
Let me ask you a question. Are the man, is the man and woman equal? Is the man and woman equal? You say no. What do you say? You said yes. What do you say? You say no. No. Let's go to uh, 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 1 Corinthians 11. One of the biggest problems in the marriages is we don't understand order. When we go to work, we understand order. Right. Yes, sir, boss. Yes, supervisor. My manager. We don't try to be toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. But in the household, there's confusion. That's why the children have no respect for authority. Because the wife has no respect for authority. Read. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of man is Christ. The head of every man is Christ. That's authority. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is who? The head of, sister, the head of the woman is who? Read that again. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Uh -huh. Who's the head of every man? Who's the head of every man? Who's the head of every man? Okay, let's see. And the head of the woman uh -oh. is the man. And the head of the woman is who? Is who? Huh? Oh, uh oh, uh oh, oh! Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's see, let's see. What's your What's your point on that? What do you mean by that? I, the Bible says the head of every woman is the man. Now, when we said the head of, okay, hold on, hold on. All right. When you say lesser than, what do you mean? Because look, us as men, we never said that. When When, when, when did we say that? Do you want to be a construction worker? Do you want to work in the sewer system? But why can't we without having the bag? I got, I got, I got, I got the option, but look, let me look, let me show you. Statistically speaking, woman does not take, they don't choose to take the type of jobs men do. We do hard, laborious work. Women do jobs that's fit for women. We, we're built differently. It is what it is. God made man and woman. But now, the Bible says, read that again, the head of every man is who? But the head of the head of every man is Christ. All right, the head of the man is who? The head of the man is so. Is it like conditionally? Is it like it depends? It's straight. Now read. And the head of and the, and the head of the man is. And the, Come on, brother. And the head of the woman is the man. All right, hold on, don't go nowhere. Hold on, sisters, sisters, sisters. I thought we wanted. Oh, I thought we wanted solution. I thought we wanted solution. Hey, now we see what the problem is. Now we see what the issue is. Why they left? Why did they leave? Because Why they, they did not agree with God. They do not want to follow God. We cannot follow God conditionally. The head of the man is Christ. No problem. The head of the woman is the man. Hold up. Hold up. What do you mean, brother? Conditionally. To what extent? To what extent is that? This is the problem. The woman must understand, you are not on this earth to do your own thing. Once you understand that, we can move as a nation. Think about Chinese and uh, Arab women. Are they walking around saying, I can do my own thing. I'm an independent Arab woman. I'm an independent Chinese woman. Who is saying that? The black and Latino woman. That's why the black and Latino household is the most out of order. You saw it. I believe that they were involved in a different lifestyle that's contrary to the Bible. You understand? And what we must do, go to John 3 verse 3, hold that. This is what we must do. They sat here and listened to when it said, we must repent. Yes, we must repent. Yes, we got to We got to stop sinning. Yes, we got to stop sinning. We got to follow God. Yeah, we got to return to God. Okay, now let's go into it. Oh, wait, hold up. You see the problem. You saw that, right? That's the problem. Read what you got, John 3 and 3. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 3. Oh. Jesus answered and said unto him. What did Jesus Christ, the black Messiah, say? Read. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again. Except a man be born again? Read. He cannot see the kingdom of God. You cannot see the kingdom of God. You must change your mindset. God is not going to bend based on what you believe. Right. You got to bend based on what God says. Yes. You understand that? And once we all do that, we'll be ready for the kingdom of heaven. Right, right now, the way that we're living, we are not ready. Now look, let me show you something. I showed you the scriptures on marriage, right? 
How should a woman conduct herself? How should a man conduct himself? What do you say, sis? I've, I've only, you know, Following God's law. Following God's law. So do the way, it, the way all right, is it a way that we're supposed to dress as men and women? Does God care about that? What do you say, brother? Does God care how men and women dress? Yes? Let's see. Go to again. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. Hey, hey, soldier Abishah. Soldier Abishah. Soldier Abishah. Hey, sister, do you think God cares how we dress? Does it matter? I know in the Old Testament they said that, you know, the women supposed to Come have here, sis. Come here. I know you got something to say. What do you say, sis? What do you say? Yeah, but you covered now. What, what do you mean by covered garments? What do you mean? Yeah, let's see what the Bible says. Let's see, let's see. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. Uh -huh. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, uh -huh. neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Uh -huh. For all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. So now, God says men can't wear dresses. Woman can't wear pants. Everybody who does that, God sees it as an abomination. That's disgusting to God. So now, if we want to see change, if we want the solution to our problems, what must we do, sister? And doing what pertaining to clothes? Go to Titus. What does God want us to wear as women? We're, all right, and what? And, and guess what? What does God want men to wear? Manly clothes, right? Man, not dresses and purses and, and all that. Yeah, not show. Sure. Yeah, yeah. So now let's see. Let's get into more details with that because the way we dress, if you didn't know, it is it, spiritual. The clothes you wear is spiritual. It's either showing what spirit you have or enhancing a spirit on you. Read the Book of Titus, chapter two, verse three. The aged woman likewise, that they be in behavior as become of holiness. So the aged woman, you're not a young little girl no more. You're an aged woman. You must be behavior in holiness, which means according to God's laws. You understand? That's how our women find righteous husbands. That's how we find righteous husbands, because we're giving off the spirit of a righteous woman. We're, ch we're conforming our mind to God's laws. So we know how to operate with a man that keep God's laws. You understand? Read. Not false accusers. Not lying on people. Read. Not giving too much wine. Not out here drunk. You understand? You can take a little sip when you, you know what I'm saying, when you with your friends. Maybe, maybe when you, when you're keeping God's high holy day, you can take a little bit of wine. If you get married and you with your husband, you, you know what I'm saying? But you ain't out here trying to be drunk out here. Read. Teachers of good things. Teachers of good things. Who should you be teaching? The children. Children and a woman. All right. That, that they may teach the younger women to be sober, to love their husbands. Because guess what? If the older women teach the younger women how to conduct themselves, to be respected as a future wife, not a jump off, not a thought. Right? But yo, listen, sis, don't, no, 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 we're not doing that. Cover yourself up, have respect for yourself. Yo, sis, you, are you gonna marry this man? Is he thinking about marrying you? Why are you talking to him? Why he coming, why he come bring you home late at night? These are the kind, you gotta teach them. That's the point. And, and guess, and guess what? The men gonna teach the men. We're gonna, that's what we out here doing. Now guess what, keep reading. That they may teach the younger women to be sober, to love their husband. To love their boyfriend. To love their boyfriend? To love their children. To love their husband. To love their husband. Not their boyfriend, but their husband. Read. To love their children. And to love their children. Why you got your son out here with that dirty shirt? Why he outside so late? Why you ain't why you why you ain't feed your baby yet? Why your son up at 12 o'clock at night? These are the things you gotta do. Because guess what? Leviticus 19:17. You doing it. They say, why are you judging me? You're not judging them. You're trying to correct the bad behavior because that's out of love. Am I right or wrong? If I love you and I see you crossing the street and the car is coming, what am I supposed to do? Brother, wait. Oh, brother, stop judging me. That don't make no sense. Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 19. No, Leviticus. Oh, Leviticus. Sorry. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verse 17. Read. 
Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. Uh -huh. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. Don't hate your brother in your heart. A lot of our people got hatred for their own nation. They see the wickedness going on, and they don't say nothing about it. God says that that is hatred. Read. And not suffer sin upon him. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not in any, thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. God says, don't avenge or bear grudge against the children of your people. My brother, my brother, let me ask you a question. Hey, Kashaya, let me ask this brother a question. Hi, what do you say? Okay, let me let me deal with him. My brother, how you feeling, brother? How you doing? So now we going over the problems of the black Hispanics and Native Americans. You are considered black. Because if a cop pull, pulls you over, he's not going to know where you're from in Africa. He's going to look at you as a black man, right? That's what he's going to look at you like a black man. So at the end of the day, we were brought from Africa and brought here as slaves. The brothers and sisters that's in Africa are being oppressed and colonized by the same people who gave us this. You understand? We are the nation of Israel. You understand that? We are the Israelites, brother. We are the Israelites. That's our bloodline. So let me ask you a question. What do you think is the solution to our issues in Africa and America? Unity, right? Let's see that. Zephaniah 2 and 1. That is another way that we're going to fix ourselves. Unity. Unity. We must unite. But guess what? We can't unite with each other if we don't identify each other as the same race. We must understand that we are the same race of people. That's when we're going to unite. And when, it, when, when, we unite, when we are united, we cannot be thinking separate ideas or different philosophies. Because that's division. Read what you got. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 1. Three. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together. Oh, nation not desired. In America, the blacks and Hispanics are not desired. In Africa, the people over there are not desired. Why? Because you got Europe. You got China. You got America over there raping and robbing the resources. That's the truth. We are all one nation. The blacks in America, the blacks in Africa. The Hispanics over there and the blacks over there. You know that they brought uh, pe people from Africa to the lands of Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico. You know that, right? We're all one nation. So now, guess what? 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. Now that we're gathered together, this is how we come on one accord. One accord right here. Read that. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 10. How do you keep a united people in one spirit, on one accord? How do you do it? If I'm, let's say you say you're Muslim, right? You're Muslim, and he's Christian. He's a Buddha, but we are African. We're African-American, we're from Africa, we're Jamaican, it's all the same. How do we unite if we got different philosophies in our mind? Let's see what the Bible says. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. that ye all speak the same thing. That we all do what? Speak the same thing. Now guess what? This is the people of Africa. A lot of our people in Africa are Muslim, right? A, a lot of us. I, I mean a lot of brothers and sisters that's Muslim, right? But guess what? When you look at history, right? Did you ever hear of the sub-Saharan slave trade? Sub-Saharan slave trade. That is the time period when the what? When the Arabs and the um the Greeks, which are the Romans, the Caucasians, sold us and had a slave trade amongst themselves. Are you aware of that? Aren't there so-called our brothers from Africa being sold as slaves amongst the um the Muslims, the Arabs now? So wait, hold on. Let me get read no no. Now didn't the people who made us Christians put us in slavery as well? So wait, wait, wait. The Muslims and the Christians put us in slavery. That's a fact. But now we can't remember who we are. Go me Psalms 83. I got to show you that the Bible is your book. I'm going to show you that because we're the same. We are the same. Read. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 83, verse 1. Read. Keep not thou silence, O oh God. God. We don't need God's word to be silenced anymore. In the Christian church, they don't understand God's words. In the, in the Muslim religion, 
They don't teach you God's words. God says he's not going to be silent anymore. He's going to use men like you to raise up the nation of Israel. He Keep Psalms 83 verse 1. Keep not thy silence, O God, and hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God, for lo, thine enemy. God's enemies read. Did you know God has enemies? Did you know that God of heaven and earth has enemies? Where are they? They're on earth. What do they do? They put us in slavery. We. Thine enemies make a tumult, and they, and they that hate thee, and the nations that hate God, we, have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Who are God's people, brother? We are God's people. It says that God's enemies has what? Took in crafty counsel against God's people. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. 